a supergrid might be some way off, but utilities need to manage intermittent energy flows today. We're in Southern California to explore one utility's sustainable vision and how wind power and energy storage fit into its future. California plans to produce 50% of its electricity by 2030 from clean energy sources like wind, and local utilities have to manage its impact on the grid. We have around 15 million residents that we serve across a 50,000 square mile area, southern and central California. Uh, sustainability is really at the core of what we do, and the electric grid will be at the very core of helping the state meet those very ambitious goals. Many people believe that storage is the way to integrate wind into a cleaner, more resilient, cost-effective grid. Wind occupies a very important place in our resource mix today. It accounts for about 10% of our total energy that we deliver to our customers, and so it's here to stay. It is a variable resource, it's intermittent, um, and that can challenge its value at times, uh, but this is where other technologies like storage being married with it increase the value of that for society and for our customers. Batteries are one way in which energy can be captured and stored when it's plentiful and inexpensive and used during times of high demand. Just last year, in 2016, we completed a project adding 20 megawatts worth of lithium ion batteries manufactured by Tesla. And so think about it this way, we're accessing the resources far away, we're bringing them in uh, through our transmission lines, and then we have the ability to store that power, and particularly with wind, which can sometimes blow at night when customers need it less. Well, there's great value in being able to store that power, wait until the resources have died down or the customer load has increased, and then release the power from the batteries into the grid. Batteries have been in use for centuries. Benjamin Franklin is said to have created the term to describe a set of link capacitors which could charge, store and discharge electricity. The batteries we use here at the Meruloma substation built by Tesla are lithium-ion batteries and these have been around since 90s. Uh, these are very similar to the small mobile batteries we use in our cell phones these days, laptops or even cars. The missing ingredient for wind power has been energy storage because it makes variable power generation predictable. The Miraloma battery storage project demonstrates that the energy storage is part of energy mix now. These projects can be built very quickly, scaled as needed. They are really good in integrating renewable energy. Batteries combined with renewables provide us the resource of the future. It's a really amazing time and we're very fortunate to be able to be at the center of that, having our grid bring all of these resources and help society to share and to use those uh, for many years to come. Greater reliance on storage could not only offset traditional ways of meeting mounting energy demand, but persuade the markets that renewable power is a reliable part of a sustainable energy mix. Large-scale wind farms cost a lot to build and maintain. In Spain, developers are hoping to get personal with a windmill that could be described as cutting edge. Up to 300 metres tall, up to 400 tonnes, and three massive blades. That's what a wind turbine looks like, right? Not a Vortex Bladeless has its way, propelling a revolution in wind power with a small bladeless design. Our goal is to develop a new wind generator that minimizes the amount of uh, mechanical elements to reduce the maintenance cost and, and the environmental impact. Uh, we are trying to develop a new technology to add to the conventional technologies. Sometimes uh, an instructor are able to start to move and they interact with the wind. Normally these uh, movements are considered uh, a problem, but we uh, try to take advantage of this uh, movement. The resonance is a great way to transmit energy from the wind to the structure. Large wind farms need space and maintenance and operators need to convince the public they won't be too noisy. Vortex's design is intended to get around these problems. The benefits of Vortex Bladeless instead of conventional wind turbine is that we are much cheaper and we are eco-friendly. The sustainability of Vortex is because we are using less, less material. We are not using any kind of oil to be replaced, so we are avoiding the, the maintenance. So everything makes Vortex more sustainable. Electricity generation will be as cheap as a solar panel. 
Growth in distributed energy generation has been driven in part by the rapid fall in the cost of solar PV. Because the Vortex turbine is not simply bladeless but small, it could effectively compete with solar here. We want to target homes where the people need to consume energy so they can produce energy. Normally the most used uh, source of energy is solar and no wind at homes and residential areas. So this is the market we are targeting. Having an idea is one thing, but perfecting the innovation beyond the lab is another. Despite some setbacks, Vortex thinks it'll soon be ready. When we will finish the development of the technology, we will take probably one year, one year and a half to go to the market. So we think it will be in 2019. We had calls from over 150 countries. Uh, we feel that the technology is interesting for any country that needs distributed energy. The shift in scale from massive wind farms to the individual home could provide a new opportunity in the development of a sustainable energy future. My vision, and I think it's the vision of the team, is to change the landscape to uh, not only from the technical point of view because we are adding something in the residential area, also because it's cool, it's nice, and from the architectural point of view, uh, we will see Vortex in the next five years on the roofs of many, many houses. These small turbines, which make no noise and require no maintenance, may one day be able to compete with and complement distributed solar, showing what a difference innovation can make at any scale. Emma, how efficient is wind power generation currently? So, for every single turbine, we are, if the wind's passing through it, we're converting about 45% of that wind into electricity generation, and we are improving all the time. That seems to me, as a, as a layman, like quite a low number. It's, we're not bad benchmarked against other energy technologies, so every energy technology has its efficiency problems, whether that's moving energy around the grid or not being able to turn on and off quickly. I think a much underestimated uh, good news story for wind is how fast we can turn on if we get the signal from National Grid. It takes seconds to mobilise a giant wind farm. From a business standpoint, what's more efficient, offshore or onshore wind energy? I think it basically depends on the size of the business and where the business is in the world and where the business is within the country. So the most efficient thing you can do in terms of moving energy around is have a project on site. If you're a big business or you've got the land and you can have a, you know, a turbine or, or a onshore wind development, then you do that. If you're a big business and you want to buy in affordable, uh, low carbon energy, then you could get it from an offshore wind developer or an onshore wind developer. A lot of people know that the cost of the infrastructure for wind power is very high, but the price of the energy itself is quite low. How does that affect the long-term planning for governments or, or, or organisations? If I were an investor and I wanted to put my money on what the cheapest forms of energy were going to be, not just today but in 10 years' time, it would be in renewables by a country mile. In most countries where we've had five to ten years of development of wind, we are at least as cheap, cheap as the alternative. So we're cheaper than gas here in the UK for onshore wind. We're cheaper than nuclear if you're talking about offshore. And then going forward, we're still expecting to make cost reductions. And finally, Emma, thinking about the future of the sustainable energy mix, where do you see wind sitting in that and what's your dream? Now we're in the middle of this fantastic industrial revolution from more electric vehicles on our streets or smart technology in our homes through to different kinds of energy generation in our electricity system. And for me, what's most exciting about that is having come from working on climate change to working on renewables, I don't have to talk about decarbonisation or low carbon technologies anymore to see these things as the future. They're just better technology. So wind isn't just about a clean energy source, it's going to be the engine room of our future economy. And that's a great way to finish. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. With costs falling and productivity rising, the winds of change are certainly blowing for this rapidly advancing energy source. While wind provides an exciting alternative source of electricity, there could be a new energy carrier that could bring a brand new framework to the energy industry, hydrogen. And if you're wondering how hydrogen might underpin a sustainable energy world, 
then talk to us on Twitter at CNBC Energy using the hashtag Sustainable Energy and Ask SE and post us your questions to ask our hydrogen expert. Until then, keep thinking green. Goodbye. Goodbye. Still watching? Perfect. Click here to watch another great video from CNBC International. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.